Now let's take a look into the inside of a router. This is the general architecture. We do have a processor uh, which is doing the routing algorithm. So the complex route computation is being done here. The processor is quite high-end, very much comparable to the CPU, high-end CPUs we're using these days, except that the, the processor here might be a bit more optimized for route computation. Second most important entity, the switching fabric. Well, people will argue this is probably the most important entity because this is the part of the router that is doing the actual switching, the actual moving of the packets. Okay? And we know that the packet needs to be moved very, very fast. So these switching fabrics definitely needs to be high speed. Third, the input and output ports. Okay? Uh, by output ports, input ports, I actually meant that these uh, network interface cards okay, that we use to connect to the routers that are you know, passing data in, passing packets in, as well as uh, connecting to routers okay, that we pass the packets out. Okay. Now, you see then, yeah, the lower part is where the packets are flowing through. So this is the data plane meaning uh, this is the part of the router that we are flowing the data. So the functionality there, very important, just to move packets. In order to be very, very fast, yeah, the computation, the switching there, is pretty much hardware optimized. And so they can work in this time scale, the nano time scale. On the other hand, the upper plane, that is the control plane. Now we have the routing algorithm implemented as software running there. So in addition to routing, it does also a little bit of the management of the router. Okay? For example, uh, tracking, monitoring, how many packets coming in, how many packets going out, things like that. Okay? Now, this part being uh, implemented in software then operates in a slower time scale, the millisecond time scale. Now, the one most important functionality for the router to do is forwarding. Now, it also does route computation here. Okay. Now, connection between the route computation and the forwarding here is this. After the route is computed, we install the forwarding table into the memory of the incoming network interface here. Okay. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit more into the input, uh, network incoming, uh, input network interface so that we see a little bit more the forwarding functionality. Uh, where does it happen? And it's happening right here. Okay, the component that's connecting the input network face, network interface to the switch chain fabric. Okay, so what's being done there is essentially switching, and it's done in a decentralized way, meaning for each of these input ports, each of these input network interface, there's a lookup processor. So the forwarding of packets coming into each of these input ports is done parallel across all these input ports. So that's what they meant here, decentralized. So each uh, lookup processor here is doing this. It looks into the header fields in the packet. Okay? And it's seeking the output port using a forwarding table that's installed from the route processor and that is installed already into the input port memory here, okay, right here. So the goal here for the incoming network interface is so that it can complete okay, the input port processing, the lookup forwarding at the line speed. Okay. Meaning, okay, if this is the speed of packets coming in, now this forwarding process needs to be fast enough so that uh, we get uh, the same output speed here. Okay. If this is so, and this is fast, so if this is R prime and R prime is uh, smaller than R, then we'll end up having this. Okay. Packet gets queued. Packets need to wait somewhere in a temporary buffer before they can go out. So that's queuing. Datagrams, if they arrive faster than going out into the switch fabric, then there's queuing delay. Now, uh, there are 
two different kinds of forwarding. In the traditional internet, we do the destination-based forwarding, which is to look at the packet header fields, particularly the destination IP address, and only the destination IP address. Now, in SDN, the modern uh, routing, uh, it's called the generalized forwarding because we can actually look at multiple header field values, not just one. And it can be arbitrary combination of these header fields. Okay. So it's a lot more general. But you can also see that provided the same lookup processor, okay, this is going to be a bit faster and this is going to be a bit slower. So in order to keep up the speed, if the incoming is R and output is R prime here, in order to make sure this R prime is as high as possible, usually in SDN, okay, these SDN routers uh, will need a faster lookup processor here. So this one here, SDN routers, uh, more expensive, while this one here, um, usually more affordable. So that was the router architecture. Now. There's one thing I want to talk about which is very, very relevant to the rest of the chapter. Okay. Destination-based forwarding. Okay. As you heard, forwarding is based on, yeah, for each packet coming in, look at the packet header field and try to match an entry in the forwarding table. Okay. So if the destination address says this, 1100100, matching this guy here, then we take this output port, okay, output link interface. If it matches, for example, this IP address, okay, then we take output port two. Okay. What happened inside this forwarding table is, if you think about it, right, there are so many possible destinations on the internet. And for each destination, there needs to be an entry, isn't it? So this is this particular destination's output interface being zero. So in fact, okay, in a forwarding table, you should be seeing for each possible IP address, what is the output link interface. For each of these IP addresses, what is the output link interface. But the thing is this, okay, how many possible destinations there can be? Well, the IP address is this big. Okay, the IP address, eight bits, 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits together, 32 bits. So you could have actually 1 gig entries. Okay. And uh, each entry might require, you see, 4 bits, um, I mean, 4 8 bits, that means at least 4 bytes, and maybe a, another byte here for the link interface. So each entry here uh, at least needs to be 5 bytes. So 5 gig, 5 bytes. And that will be five gigabyte at least, just to keep the forwarding table. Okay, so the input port network card there. Okay, it's gonna require not just a high speed lookup processor, but also a lot of memory space. In addition to the buffer space, might be required right in case queuing occur. So that particular interface there is already very costly, and if you need to have many input ports, many output ports. Think about the cost of a very high-end router, very expensive. And that's not going to scale very well if uh, we actually, yeah, expand the IP address space. So this is a 32 bits uh, IP address. This is IP version 4. Later on, you will see. Okay, there's another version of the IP layer protocol. That's called the IP version 6. And the address space there is actually expanded to 28. So this approach, each IP, each entry, is not going to scale very well. So what's really being done on the internet is this. We do matching all right, but not match the entire IP address. We only match the prefix okay, of the IP address. So what we're doing there, doing table lookup, is to do matching, but we are only matching to the longest prefix. So this is what we do when we're looking up in the forwarding table entry. So given the destination address, okay, so we'll take this address and match the entries here. Okay. This time we don't have one entry per IP address. It's actually an aggregated or the prefix. 
So what you're seeing here is we only specify the first part of the IP address and leave the rest general. Okay. So that is also saying that as long as the destination ad address, the first few bytes mass match this pattern. Okay. The rest of the IP address can be general, free. Okay. Now, as long as you have a destination IP address looking like this, then we take this packet to this output port. And the second entry is saying that okay, if the IP address matches this pattern, the rest can be flexible. No matter what, we go to output port 1. Right. Now, there could be multiple entries. For example, this guy here and this guy here, you see here. Oh, up to this point, they are the same. So you could have an IP address matching both entries, isn't it? So in this case, we'll take the longest prefix. Okay, we'll take the entry that the destination IP address matches the longest. Okay, now in case the rest of the three bit of this IP address is 000, then we forward that packet to output 1. If it's uh, something like 101, then it does not quite match this entry. However, matching this entry, then we send it to output 2. Let's exercise a little bit. Now, if we get a packet, the destination address is this. What should be the output interface? Let's see, the first eight bits match, great. In fact, all these three entries, the first 16 bits, uh, actually 19, 20, yeah, the first 20 bits are all the same. So these two de uh, destination address, uh, I think the first 20 bits are also the same. So what differs is beginning from the 21st bits, from the 21st bits. So which, um, which entry in the forwarding table does the first destination address match? Well, this is zero. So only this entry match, right? Because this is one, this is one. So these two not matching. Therefore, this packet goes to interface zero. Now, the second destination here, oh, 21st bit is 1, so it should be either one of these. Now, 0, 0, 0, well, it actually matches more, the second entry, therefore, the outgoing interface for the second destination address being 1. And that takes us to a double quiz time.